The announcement of proposed cuts to mental health comes on the heels of the state health department's decision to end funding for community health centers and child prevention programs. Taken together, the cuts paint a picture of an Oklahoma health system in crisis. The Oklahoma State Department of Health had already been suffering the effects of Oklahoma's budget crunch even before this week's announcement. In an address to the board earlier this month, Health Commissioner Dr. Terry Klein said the agency has lost more than $20 million in state appropriations since 2009. And we have a bit of a perfect storm. At the same time that we have had our state reductions, we're also seeing reductions in many of our federal grants. And in addition to that, we have, as anyone who's in business knows, you have cost of doing business that also goes up. The department announced last month that employees who make more than $35,000 a year would be furloughed for two days each month, but the cuts didn't end there. On Monday, the agency said it could no longer afford to fund nine child abuse prevention programs and 25 federally qualified health centers. Agency spokesman Tony Seller says those cuts will begin November 15th. We have to make these very tough decisions. It's something that we don't want to do, uh, but it's financially necessary at this time for us to meet our responsibilities. Eliminating the $1.6 million uncompensated care fund is just the latest blow to community health centers. Brent Wilborn is director of public policy for the Oklahoma Primary Care Association, which represents 20 centers in the state. Right now we're waiting for some renewals for uh, grant funding from the federal government at this time for health centers, which isn't all of their funding, of course, but it, it is a substantial part. So when you combine the state and federal, um, that ends up creating a very um, difficult scenario when they're having to make longer term plans. Community health centers served more than 200,000 patients in Oklahoma last year, nearly a third of whom had no insurance. Wilborn says the funding reductions means many of those centers will have no choice but to scale back services. And that might mean things like delaying um, a contract renewal for a physician who provides services there. Uh, it might be um, constricting hours of operation where you might not have the same extended hours in the evening. Uh, it could mean a number of different things that they could do. Um, but all of them ultimately end up impacting what the patients have available to Lou Carmichael, the CEO of Variety Care, which operates 16 centers around the state, told a legislative panel last year that hours had already been reduced at some sites. That saved the staff that we had to have in the evenings, but what it also created was more emergency room visits. Because if the patient can't go to see their primary care provider in an open access environment, then they're going to go to the ER. That ends up increasing costs for health care, a study published online last year in the American Journal of Public Health concluded that patients who received the majority of their care at federally qualified health centers reported 33 percent lower spending on specialty care, 27 percent lower inpatient cost, and 25 percent fewer admissions compared to non-health center patients. Oklahoma Institute of Child Advocacy Executive Director Joe Dorman says cutting funding for the community health centers will have a devastating impact. These federally qualified health centers serve a need out in the different parts of the state. They provide low-cost care for individuals who oftentimes are in remote areas and can't get help because they can't afford to travel a long distance to go to a hospital. Dorman is even more incensed over cuts to child abuse prevention programs, saying those will have what he calls a generational impact. Oklahoma ranks number one in the nation for multiple adverse childhood experiences. Number one in the nation. That means the trauma that's inflicted on kids when they are young carries on with them into adulthood and affects their life. Ultimately, we're either going to see a life expectancy shortened or we're going to see these kids eventually end up in prison. Sherry Fair is executive director for Parent Promise, a home visiting program which teaches parenting skills and offers services such as child abuse prevention counseling. Fair says making up the lost revenue from the health department won't be easy. What it means for Parent Promise in particular is that about a third of our, our budget has been reduced by about one third and of the 150 to 170 families that we serve each year, we're now not going to be able to serve about 70 to 80 of those families unless we can find some alternative funding sources. 
Baer says the tragedy of losing those services is that the program has already shown it works. The state has reported that um, 93 percent of the families that we, along with the other contractors across the state, have served have never had a, a case confirmed by DHS. Meanwhile, the cuts may not be over. There are other measures that we're taking uh, a look at, and we announced that earlier when we made the furlough that we were also looking at possible, uh, you know, other measures uh, to meet our financial obligations. It's, it's frustrating, and it's really disheartening to think that these aren't the only services that are going to get cut. These, our clients are not the only Oklahomans that are going to suffer from this situation. And it's a little bit um, scary to think that this could be the tip of the iceberg. While the Capitol is closed this week, budget negotiators are reportedly continuing to meet. Dorman says it's past time for lawmakers to reach an agreement. We have to have people who are adults in the room that are willing to sit down around the table and come up with solutions. It's unacceptable what we're seeing come out of the Capitol.